Well, everybody, I was born to Dan Terry Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Thursday, July 2nd, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com. Oh yeah, iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film Fatal Affair. The streaming service shared a trailer for the psychological thriller Wednesday featuring Nia Long as Ellie, a lawyer with a husband, Marcus, played by Stephen Bishop, and a daughter. Here shows Ellie reconnect with David, played by Omar Epps, an old friend and love interest. Ellie decides to try and mend her marriage after calling off an encounter with David. Ellie learns, however, that David is more dangerous and unstable than she realizes. It begins to stalk and threaten Ellie, whose life and loved ones are put into jeopardy. Netflix also shared a poster for the film Wednesday on Twitter. Fail Affair is directed by Peter Sullivan and co-stars Maya Sojan, Aubrey Clayton, and Caroline Hennessy. The movie premieres July 16th. Long is known for playing Lisa Wilkes on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Juliana Goosey Green on Empire, and Shay Mosley on NCIS Los Angeles. Epps is per, best known for portraying Dennis Gant on ER, Eric Foreman on House, and Darnell on This Is Us. Marshall Ali will portray boxing legend Jack Johnson in a new HBO series. Deadline reported Tuesday that Ali will star in Unruly, a limited series based on Ken Burns' PBS documentary, Unforgivable Blackness, The Rise and Fall of Jack Johnson, and Jeffrey C. Ward's companion book. The six-episode series recounts how Johnson became the world's first black heavyweight boxing champion. Johnson, nicknamed the Galveston uh, Giant, was born in 1878 and died in 1946. The official synopsis reads, His bold exploration depicts the champion's rise to athletic greatness and the cause he paid for his skin and defiance, which created a blueprint for black resistance in every justice movement from generations to come. Playwright Dominique Marcel will write the script and serve as an executive producer. Ali will co-executive produce with Tom Hanks and both them. Ali previously portrayed Johnson in a 2000 stage production of The Great White Hope. He told The Hollywood Reporter in 2017 that Johnson and Marvin Gaye were her dream, were, are his dream roles. He said, there are so many wonderful characters out there. Marvin Gaye and Jack Johnson are my dream roles, but I really just want the opportunity to go on the hero's journey. Never done that. Ali played Wayne Hayes in season two of the HBO series True Detective. He is also known for portraying Remy Dalton on House of Cards and Sheik Ali in Rami. MC Universal and Viacom CBS have come to terms on a deal to bring television shows such as The Original Charm and Ray Dalvin to the Peacock streaming service. The deal which comes before Peacock's national launch on July 15th also includes films. The Affair, Everybody Hates Chris, The Game, Undercover Boss, Real Housewives of Hollywood, and more are joining Peacock when it launches. Charm, however, will arrive on Peacock in October. Each show will continue to be available on Viacom CBS platforms, such as Showtime for Ray Donovan and The Affair, or for content that also appears on CBS All Access. The Godfather Trilogy, Catch Me If You Can, Old School, Seabiscuit, Fatal Attraction, The Firm, The Talented Mr. Ripley, Last Holiday, An Officer and a Gentleman, Patriot Games, American Beauty, and more are coming to Peacock on the film side. The film will stream in limited exclusivity windows throughout 2021, 2022, and 2023. More movies will be announced at a later date. Peacock is available now for Comcast customers after a soft launch on April 15th. The streaming service will be the home of The Office and the Save by the Bell revival. Francis Maffredi, the president of content acquisition and strategy at Peacock, said in a statement, We're truly excited to bring some of the most popular movies and series from across the Viacom CBS family on brands to Peacock. Continue to expand the Peacock catalog with premium programming for NBC Universal and beyond, partnering with companies like Viacom CBS to ensure that all of our viewers can choose from the best entertainment options available in the market today. Comedy Central announced on Wednesday that the classic MTV animated series Beavis and Butthead will return with creator Mike Judd once again at the helm. 
Beavis and Butthead has received a two-season order at the network, which has also plans for spinoffs and specials. Judge will be writing and producing the series along with the voicing the titular characters. The revival will tackle Gen Z after the original series dealt with Gen X. Judd said in the statement, it seems like the time was right to get stupid again. Beavis and Butthead ran for seven seasons on MTV from 1993 to 1997. The show was revived in 2011 for one season and a film titled Beavis and Butthead Do America, which was released in 1996. Comedy Central, which is under Viacom CBS along with MTV, recently announced a Daria spinoff titled Jody that will feature a voice cast led by Tracy Ellis Ross. Daria and also an animated aired on MTV and was a spinoff of Beavis and Butthead. CBS announced it will pay tribute to the late Carl Reiner by airing a pair of colorized episodes of the Dick Van Dyke Show. The network said two episodes prom- uh, promptly featuring Reiner, who created and co-starred the Dick- in the Dick Van Dyke Show, will air Friday at 8 p.m. on CBS and streaming service CBS All Access. Reiner died on Monday at the age of 98. The Dick Van Dyke Show, now in living color, a special tribute to Kyle Reiner, will feature the episodes Coast to Coast Big Mouth and October Eve, which were colorized under Reiner's supervision. CBS says Reiner had cited October Eve as one of his favorite episodes of the series. Reiner said in 2017, In October Eve, I got the chance to perform on the show as someone other than Alan Brady, and I love the character of Carpentina, the artist, as soon as I read it. The episode aired on CBS in two separate. Uh, the, uh, the episodes aired on CBS in two separate. The Dick Van Dyke shows now in Living Color special, executive produced by Reiner. The first in December 11, 2016, and the second on December 22, 2017. Reiner, who served as the executive producer of the Dick Van Dyke show, earned five Emmy awards for his work on the series, which also starred Dick Van Dyke. Mary Tyler Moore, Larry Matthews, Maury Amsterdam, Richard Deacon, Jerry Paris, and Anne Morgan Gibbard. The series originally ran from 1961 to 1966. The late John Prime was named the first honorary poet laureate of the state of Illinois by Governor J.B. Prickster on Wednesday. Prime, who was born in Maywood, Illinois, is the first to receive the honorary designation, which seeks to commemorate the music legend's life and to celebrate his writing and musical contributions. The state of Illinois is searching for a new poet laureate with the position not have been filled since 2017. Prime died in April at the age of 73 due to complications from the coronavirus. Um, Prime's wife, Fiona Whelan Prime, said in a statement, I have no doubt that John would be proud and delighted to receive this recognition from his home state of Illinois. Although he moved to Nashville in the early 80s, he continued to visit Chicago and Maywood in particular to spend time with his family. John continued to follow Chicago sports teams and had never found a hot dog, pizza, or Italian beef sandwich to rival the originals. Watching John, as I did many times play to an Illinois audience, was always thrilling. A homeboy delighted in the love and approval of his loyal fans, some of them family, longtime friends, old school buddies, and neighbors. John had this great respect for writers of all kinds. He regarded poets as being among those who work, carried weight, relevance, and elevated craft. It is such an honor for me, our sons, and the entire Prime family to acknowledge that our beloved John will, will be named an honorary poet laureate of the state of Illinois. Thank you, Governor Prixer, for this wonderful recognition. A group of nine women who accused former film producer Harvey Weinstein of sexual misconduct and harassment have agreed to settle of nearly $19 million that will go to a victim's fund. The deal would settle a class action lawsuit filed two years ago by New York State against Weinstein and his production uh, company if it had proved in bankruptcy and federal district court. New York Attorney General Alicia James uh, announced the agreement on Tuesday. She said in a statement, Harry Weinstein and the Weinstein Company failed their female employees after the harassment, threats, and discrimination. These survivors are finally receiving some justice. This agreement is a win for every woman who has experienced sexual harassment, discrimination, intimidation, or retaliation by her employer. James said the $18.9 million will go into a victim's compensation fund and benefit women who say they were abused by Weinstein. The 22-page settlement also released Weinstein's accusers from confidentiality and nondisclosure agreements. Uh, she also added, Harvey Weinstein left a trauma to, that was crushing for many women. Um, actress and screenwriter Luziette Geese, 
who led the committee to, of survivors seeking to establish the fund, added, there is no amount of money that can make up for this injustice, but I'm extremely proud of what we have accomplished. Weinstein is serving 23-year prison sentence following his conviction in February on criminal sexual uh, conduct and, race, and rape charges in New York City. He is still facing criminal charges in California. The accusations against Weinstein spearheaded the global Me Too movement, which has since exposed a number of high-profile figures to similar complaints of sexual harassment and misconduct. Usher, Shania Twain, and more have joined up the lineup for Good Morning America's ongoing summer concert series. Jason Derulo, The Killers, Luke Bryan, and Gloria Estefan have also joined the lineup and are set to perform through July and August. The summer concert series was kicked off by Katy Perry in May, where she performed her new song, Daisies. John Legend, Sia, Black Eyed Peas, Garrett Clark Jr., Skip Marley, and Her performed through June. Old Dominion will be taking the stage on Friday with Shaggy featuring Sting set to perform on July 10th, Ellie Goody on July 17th, Derulo on July 24th, The Killers on July 31st, Brian on August 7th, Twain on August 14th, Estefan on August 17th, Megan Thee Stallion on August 21st, and Baby Reha on August 28th. Usher will bring the summer concert series to a close with the performance on September 4th. Each artist will perform virtually from their homes due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sia is a new grandmother. The 44-year-old recording artist said Tuesday during an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music's Beat 1 that her younger son recently welcomed twins. Sia says, my youngest son just had two babies. I'm just immediately horrified. No, I'm cool. They call me Nana. She added, I'm trying to get them to call me lovely like Kris Jenner. I like call me lovey. Uh, Sia announced on Cyrus XM, the morning mashup in May, that she adopted two teenage boys in 2019. She said they were 18. They were, they're both 19 years old now. They were aging out of the foster care system. Yeah, and I love them. Sia says her sons are struggling amid the coronavirus pandemic, but we're focused on their education. She says they're both finding it pretty difficult, one more so than the other, but they're both doing things that are really good for them right now. They're really doing a lot of educational stuff that's really good for them. Sia released the holiday album, Every Day is Christmas, in 2017. She last released a song together in May from her upcoming musical film, Music. Ellen John announced on Wednesday he will be launching a new series on YouTube that will present classic concert footage. Ellen John Classic Concert Series will premiere on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Music Legends official YouTube page. The first episode will feature John's 1976 Live at Playhouse Theater performing from Edinburgh, Scotland. John performs a number of hit songs at the concert, including Rocket Man, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, and Benny and the Jets, among others. A new episode showcasing a different classic concert will then premiere every Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for six weeks. The series will raise funds for the Elton John AIDS Foundation in support of COVID-19 relief efforts. John said in a statement, My foundation's COVID-19 emergency fund helps frontline partners prepare for and respond to pandemics and its effect on HIV prevention and care for the most marginalized communities. He continued, We cannot jeopardize HIV testing and care during this time or else the results could be disastrous for the 37.5 million people living with HIV. So I'm really happy to connect this YouTube concert series to benefit our foundation's urgent COVID response. John in March hosted the iHeart Living Room Concerts, which feature Billy Idish, Mariah Carey, Dave Grohl, and more performed from their homes in order to support Feeding America and the First Responders Children's Foundation. And finally, Ty Dollar Sign is back with new music. The 30 year old singer released the song Ego Death featuring Kanye West, Figure Twigs, and Skillerex, and Serpentine with Feet. On Wednesday, in Ego Death, Ty Dollar Sign sings about how he changed from a loved one who ended up leaving. Ego Death is the first single to debut from Ty Dollar Sign's forthcoming album. He's expected to release his third studio album later this year. Ty Dollar Sign said in an interview with Spin in August that West influenced the sound of his new album, which will feature textual uh, vocals and instrumentation. The singer says, I had a meeting one time with Kanye, he played him the album. He was like, bro, now you need to do what you do, add more bass and more drums, add more of the real shit. That's where no one else is doing. He added, that conversation definitely inspired me and made me go back to and go crazy with the live instruments. 
Wes released a music video for Wash Us in the Blood, a first single from his forthcoming 10th studio album, God's Country, on Tuesday. Ty Dollar Sign released his second studio album, Beach House 3, in 2017. He most recently released a self-titled album, Mythy, in 2018 as the duo Mythy with Jeremiah. And as your entertainment report for Thursday, June, uh, July 2nd, 2020, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.